identify your company's reporting status and the exemptions. So we're going to talk about more the Corporate Transparency Act coming January 1st, 2024, what you're needing to do as a business owner that lives corporate life or an investor. You might just have real estate in LLCs, S-Corps, C-Corps. It's all going to count and it's all having to be reported. So I brought with me my partner, expert Scott. We own generational wealth systems together. We set up your trust, make sure you're compliant and make sure you set for that generational wealth. But all of this is a new requirement coming January 1 by the United States government. We're gonna go listen and do an interview with Scott and I. We're gonna talk about three things in that interview. The criteria for a reporting company, number one. Number two, understanding the 23 exemptions and we're gonna go through them in thorough detail. So get a pen and paper. And then number three, avoiding any incorrect assumptions or misunderstandings because as you know, this great place called the internet, I call it the bathroom wall because anybody can write anything. There's a lot of misinformation and uh, just a lot of inaccuracies. You want to be following the right source and that would be us here on the channel. So while you're here, subscribe, click that notification button. I want you here five days a week. And uh, we are here teaching you money, business, wealth building, any conversations about that. And if there's a conversation that you're wanting, and it's not that you can't see it on the search bar, put it in the comment section below and we'll be right back with that content. So let's listen in to this interview with Scott and I talking about the reporting and the exemptions. So Scott, welcome back to talk more about just the simplified BOI, which I don't know if there's anything simple about this entire Corporate Transparency Act, but talk about the three things that are absolutely, you know, just required the criteria for a reporting company. Yeah, absolutely. So the three primary things are you need to know if your company falls under the domestic or foreign reporting categories. The other, we've got to use FinCEN's flowchart to determine your company's status. And again, they have that report that says, am I exempt or am I a reporting company? And then you've got to regularly review your company's status in case of any changes that come about. So typically that those changes in a company if it's an existing company after 2024, you'll have 90 days to report, or it's again, still kind of unclear, 30 to 90 days to report that beneficial ownership information. Well, again, if you are US filed, whether you're foreign or domestic, you've got to go follow this through. In the description below, we'll be giving you some links that you can follow through just to stay uh, current, as well as again, stay on our channel and we'll keep you up to date. So number two, let's move into understanding the 23 exemptions. So let's head through those, Scott. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Understanding the 23 exemptions, there's a lot of different companies that are not required. Securities reporting issuer. So again, if you've got a fund or you know, you've done a private placement memorandum, it's typically registered through the Securities and Exchange Commission. We don't have to report. Governmental authority, basically meaning, you know, if you're a tribe or some uh, religious organization or falls under that government authority, they're exempt. Banks, credit unions, depository institutions money services businesses. So again, if you're in the business of borrowing or, or strike that lending money out, uh, you're not required. If you're a broker, dealer in securities, the Securities and Exchange or a clearing agency, maybe there's other exchange acts, registered entities, investment companies. Now, again, investment companies, we're talking about more of the larger investment firms that have investment advisors, things like that. Not a small investment company that has a couple different owners. If you're in venture capital insurance companies, you're a state licensed insurance producer. I mean, there's just a lot of them. Commodity exchange, an accounting firm, a public entity, financial market and utility. I mean, pooled investment vehicles, there's a lot of them. Like I said, there's approximately 23 different exemptions. But if you don't fall into any of those categories and you're a small business owner who has an LLC or a corporation, you are a reporting company. So Scott, talk about, I'm going to go through back through a few of these just because I think a lot of our kind of clients who actually have, you know, whether it's an LLC, S Corp, C Corp, limited partnership, who have real estate, we're not talking about an exemption because you might own, you know, 10 doors or two apartments in those kind of LLCs. Those are required, right? Those aren't what you're talking about when you say pooled investment vehicles. Yeah. And like I said, not just a small little group of individuals. I mean, we're talking large 
public companies that it like REITs and things of that nature that are falling under those exempt statuses. Exactly. And what I'm seeing in a lot of this list, and again, what we'll do is we're actually going to carve this 23 exemption list. And I know it's going to be big in the description, but we'll put it on a link. So we'll give you these 23 exemptions. So click on the link below to grab them. But what I'm noticing is a lot of them that are already reported say to the SEC or to other agencies aren't really going to be required because they're already in such, whether it's FINRA, they're already in such financial- Financial not, scrutiny. <laughs> yeah, they're already under financial scrutiny by who they are, what they do, is a lot of them are the ones that are going to be exempt where everyone else who's just doing private investments, private business, small business, which again, the backbone of America is 32.6 million small business owners and uh you can tell, not a fan, going to say it loud. It takes away a lot of privacy and security and quite honestly, just layers on more paperwork. I mean, think about, Scott, how many people don't even think they need corporate compliance when it comes to an LLC, much less this is another reporting. And I'm not saying that to shy away from corporate life. It's just be aware that having a team of experts that stay in front of you is mandatory and critical in our opinion. Absolutely. So if you have any questions or requests, make sure you go to asklaurel.com and again, grab that 23 exemptions. While you're out here and you've heard me say the word over and over, living corporate life, if you don't know what that is, there'll be two tickets to our intensive that's coming up. We do them on a regular basis. They're from 10 a.m to 6 p.m. There's a marketplace for you to make money. It's a super cool experience where you learn a revenue producing day and what it's going to take to live inside this corporate life and get successful quickly. So the third thing I want to just ask about is what are some of the incorrect compliance, you know, I'd say issues that you see that are already going to probably be coming on the horizon as well as penalties associated? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the assumptions or incorrect assumptions is don't just assume that your company is exempt without a thorough verification process. You definitely need to keep yourself up to date with any changes in the exemption criteria. If you need some guidance, seek professional advice if you're unsure about your company's exemption status. As a matter of fact, the report has a checklist that you can go through that identifies, are you in fact a reporting company or do you fall under those exemptions? So again, keeping it on top of that and make sure that you do it. I mean, a lot of people might think it's not going to affect me. I've got time. No, make sure that you get it done. And here's the other thing is any changes that happen within the company have to be reported as well. So that would be one other thing to avoid making that assumption is, you know, I've made some changes. I've already filed it. I don't need to file it again. So uh, last question, who should be the expert? I mean, if I'm thinking who should be the expert that would do this filing, if you personally don't want to do it yourself as the owner, I mean, do you think a lot of CPAs and accountants are going to take this on? I'm going to say yes and no. Our kind, which are more tax strategists and more integrated and comprehensive would, but I don't see the typical H and R blocks and you know turbo taps almost also you know all of a sudden popping up some new thing that says hey make sure you get this registration as part of your corporate compliance. I mean, which expert in the financial space is going to you think take this on? The majority of that I've seen are, are CPAs. You know, the ones that are proactive, the ones that keep up on the changes that aren't oh well this is always what I've done for my clients in the past. These are those CPAs that are. Like I said, proactive, they're going to say, hey, here's some things you really need to be considering coming up. And this is a massive change happening Jan 1, 2024. So it is going to be CPAs. Some attorneys will be involved. I know my team can kind of help provide a little bit of the guidance. We can't do the filing of it. But yes, it's going to be mostly CPAs and any type of tax attorneys. Awesome. So again, if you ever need a strategy session, I'll give you one more link below in the description. Click on a link for a strategy session. Talk to our team. You're going to have to figure this out and have it be part of just a checklist and a calendar, just like all the other corporate compliance that you need to keep up. Again, at any time, go to Ask Laurel, A-S-K-L-O-R-A-L. Ask a question, make a request. Make sure you're here. Subscribed every day like we requested. And we will talk to you tomorrow.